Hello, my name is Michael Perry, and I'm a Peacecaster. I had the privilege of interviewing Brian Swim at the uh, 2008 Festival of Faith. Mr. Swim is a uh, cosmologist and the author of many books, including The Hidden Heart of the Cosmos. I interviewed him on November 13th, right after his festival presentation, and it was a wonderful time. All right, Mr. Swim, my name is Michael Perry, and I'm with the Peacecaster program, and I would like to ask you a few questions. Great. All right. What do you think is important for kids my age, or older, or younger, whatever? Um, what do you think is important about your work that could relate to them and would have glass-shattering effect on them? Hmm. I think I just bring the latest news about the universe, how old it is and how it is evolving. and. And then also, I think it's, it's kind of amazing to learn that the stars, for instance, were directly involved with giving birth to our bodies. That's kind of an astounding thought. So maybe the, the connection between our own particular bodies and lives in the vast universe, that would be my main um, offering to your generation. All right. Um, how can this information help young people in their pursuit of peace and cooperation? I think it helps when we learn that we're actually all like cousins, genetically. We all came out of the same long process. So it's, we're all part of the same family. It's all different human groups. We're all really profoundly related. I think, um, as opposed to seeing ourselves as separate, we see ourselves as part of the same energy. And that has to help for peace, seeing that we're really a common community. What advice do you have for young people today who are coming of age? I guess the one thing I would say <clears throat> is that Take seriously the idea that there's a particular role that you have to play. It's mysterious, it takes time to find out what it is, but this, this vast process needs your own particular gifts. Even before you know what they are, the universe is attempting to get you involved. And don't, don't give in, hold out for that kind of life where you know you are really contributing the deepest gift that you are to the world. That's very good advice. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, now, one of my questions, one that I think is, I should be have a very interesting answer is, you know Mark Everett, or Hugh Everett, uh, Everett yeah. and his many worlds theory. Yeah. And and through your presentation, you spoke about how certain things could only happen at certain times, and if they hadn't happened, nothing else would have happened after that. Yeah. It's a chain, and if a link is broken, it could not continue. So are you saying that, like, through his theory of many worlds, that whatever can happen will? Are you saying that that is not possible? So the idea of... Like right now, branching out at this yeah. moment. You know, so we're having this conversation, but I had a couple ideas that I almost said to you, but I held back. Yeah. But maybe those are happening in another universe somewhere, yes. according to Hugh Everett's point of view. That could be, it could be, in which case all possibilities are being manifested. I don't believe so. I think that, that what's taking place here is, is unique. And this is, this is where it's all taking place. So it gives, it gives even more drama to the kinds of decisions that, that your generation is making. So it's, it's hard not to pursue everything, but it certainly is dramatic. What, what message could you tell people to help them understand your work? Because it's very complicated, much of it is. Yeah. Um, 
guess the simplest way of saying it is that we've discovered a great truth that the universe 14 billion years ago was just hydrogen gas. And then it became butterflies and palm trees and humans. And it's just so astonishing to imagine that we're involved in a process that is that mysterious. And so our, our lives, the meaning of our lives, is determined by how we enter into that process and then whether or not we enhance life or we degrade it. That would be the essence of what I'm trying to teach. Okay, I would say, um, going back to your concerns about peace, I, I think another thing that, that might help is that there's a certain inevitability to peace. It is it's going to take place. And by, by working for peace and by associating with others that are working for peace, you can keep that, that faith alive. So it's, I can't tell you how grateful I am uh, to you and to your, your young colleagues for devoting yourself to this work because I am convinced that maybe even in your lifetime, we will move into another way of being human, one that's beyond warfare. So my gratitude is infinite. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sawyer. You're welcome, Michael. <laughs> thank you.